Hello everybody. Um, I'm trying to get busy at my cabbage. I know it's late, but tomorrow I want some I want to do some other things. So I just want to get this cabbage done. And I was going to use my big Tupperware mandolin, but I think I'm just going to use the smaller one. And uh, I was going to do kraut this year, but I didn't have I just haven't had the time. I've got everything except the cabbage to do it, but I just can't get it done right now. But anyway, I have purchased me a while back, maybe two years ago, a crock pot. And it looks like a cooler, and you carry it like a cooler, and you put your utensils on top. I always put like my red utensils up here and then you just carry them in there and you take it with you wherever you go and there it is but inside is this right here it's a square like crock pot so what I'm doing and I forget what that it's a presto I bought it off Amazon I bought two of them but anyway this here is the crock pot part and I'm just going to fill that up with cabbage and um, I'm going to put that on slow all night, let that cook and put some little bit of beef broth in it and let that cook down in there and just a tad bit of chicken with parsley uh, broth. I just like to flavor things a little bit. So anyway, let me get this part that I've already done in here. Now tomorrow, when this cooks down real good, I will put um, the corned beef in it. But I'm gonna put these big cores in it and just let it cook in there because it's got a lot of strong cabbage flavor to it. And when it cooks down a little bit, uh, Hi, Laura. I like to, I think I can, yeah. Anyway, I like to eat that part uh, after it cooks down and stuff. I used to just eat them like this, but I like to cook them down a little bit, take some of that hot flavor out of it. So I'm gonna put them in there. I think I got another one in here. Yeah, I've got two of them. I'm only putting one head of cabbage in, so let me get underneath all this good stuff here and get some of the I've already did so I'm just gonna fill that get my, this is my Tupperware mandolin and I've got a great big one and this is the middle sized one so I don't need anything great big if I'm not doing a lot so I just got my little cutting thing out here. So anyway, we're just gonna keep putting that in there. And then I'm going to put the corned beef in tomorrow. So I'm just gonna hold this up and, and get that all kinda shredded a little bit. I don't do this fast enough. I can do it fast and get it done quicker. But anyway, you can see how it takes and shreds it up. So tomorrow I'll probably have maybe a potato. If anybody has any suggestions, what goes good with cabbage. Now what I'll do, I'll cook this in the cooker all night. Then tomorrow I'll get my big number 10 cast iron skillet out. And I will fry it down a little bit and put some butter in it and um, I might put the butter in now while it's cooking overnight but then I'll put the corned beef in it and I don't want to put the corned beef too quick so I'll put it in tomorrow but anyway this is a nice little thing to use 
for all kinds of stuff. It's made by Tupperware. So I'm just gonna keep putting that in there. So now since these are all like thinner pieces, I'll just cut them down. So if anybody has any suggestions about what you would make with cabbage and corned beef, And I'll probably take a little bit of that corned beef and make a Reuben on rye. Uh, Kevin uh, Farrell, he um, is in Tupperware. I mean, he's over a lot. And he had a couple recipes on there I thought I would like to try with the Reuben dip. My sister used to make it, but she doesn't make it anymore. But she'd make it for our gatherings and have little pieces of rye bread. And I've even done it myself, but... I haven't done it lately in several, more than probably five years I haven't done it, so I'm going to try one of them recipes. I kind of felt lost tonight because the boys went with their dad and uh, Kai's mommy come and got her and uh, after running all week and doing, it was kind of kind of a like a where you just sit there and you think so what I did and this is the craziest thing I'm almost 62 and my husband's 79 after you know being with the grandkids and running back and forth and what what do you think we watched tonight we sit there and I laughed so hard that I thought my stomach was gonna bust we watched these little babies and how they laughed and on uh, YouTube on the funniest babies <laughs> I thought of all things that we're sitting here laughing about and watching when we could watch something for older people and we're sitting there laughing and the more I laughed the more he laughed and the more he laughed the more I laughed and I'm like these babies were so funny and it all shows also showed the grandparents some grandparents with their kids and their parents and we kind of reminisced um, they would go all crazy because they walked they took three steps and I looked over at him and I said I can remember when I went nuts when my kids took their first steps and was all praising and and everything and I kind of forgot about that but these parents was really, and it done my heart good to see that the parents was happy and seeing their kids was prospering and doing good. So yeah, I think we sat there for a good hour and a half, I know, and watched them. They had so many of the videos, we sit and watched them. I hate to say this on tape, but this one little kid... <laughs> You're probably going to get mad at me, but I laughed so hard. These parents was teaching their kids um, gymnastics. <laughs> and uh, the oldest one came out, flipped on the, um, the mat. And then the number two kid came out, and it was a little bit littler than the other one. Probably about five or something like that. And it flipped, but not as good. And then... They sent their little one out, and he was like a baby. He was probably maybe two, and he wanted to do it. So they said, number three, come out. And he came running out there, and he couldn't flip like they did. He fell. He just tripped and fell on his face, and when he did, he let gas out. And you could hear it, and, and you could hear the mother going, oops, like that. That did it right there. I laughed so hard I couldn't stop laughing. Because I know that wasn't meant to be on tape. <laughs> but yeah, it, we sit there and watch that. Finally, I told him, I said, I got to stop watching this. I got to get up and get some laundry done. 
but you all know as well as I do that the grandchildren and children are such a blessing to have around. I'm just going to cut this up with this because it's all like a fell apart and all that. So I'm just going to cut it up and put it in there the way I want it. But then mandolins from like this big one here. I've got a big one here from um, Tupperware. And it just sets up good and sturdy. And then it has the big thing you put your you put your vegetable or whatever you're going to chop up on that and then you just keep going down like that and it just chops it right up right now but I got them out to look at them and use the little one for a minute so I'm cutting it up about like that I might cut some of them a little bigger probably I'll just cut down through there like that and you know I made some little I got this at the Mennonite store it's a little broth chicken broth with um, parsley in it and I just mixed up a little bit not a lot to overpower it but just to give it that little bit of a, a flavor And believe me, I could probably eat this whole head of lettuce because I love our lettuce. Glad I caught that because usually I catch it after I try to upload them. I say, oh, I didn't mean to say that. I could eat this whole head of cabbage. I love it. It does thicken your blood, though. Uh, I'm on um, Warfarin because I had several DVTs in my life and they put me on blood thinner and we when we lived down on the highway in our other big farmhouse we got blessed with cabbage people was getting like down here where we're at they get um food and people get that food and they don't want it and see i'm not even going to get into that beef about how it's wasted but a lot of people would bring it to me because they knew I'd either can it or do something with it. Well, I'd already canned. And I canned apple pie filling and um, stuff like that. And somebody brought me, I think it was four great big heads of cabbage. And I thought, I'm eating every bit of that. I'm, we're going to eat this every day because it was just Tom and I then at the house. The, the grandkids was all little and um, they certainly wasn't going to eat it so I ate cabbage every day I, I ate it raw I made coleslaw I uh, put it in potatoes and we did everything with it and we ate it because we like it well <laughs> I went to the doctor to get my blood checked and Oh, it was way too thick. I think it was like 1.3 or something like that. It was way too thick. He said, what, have you done something different in your diet? And I said, yeah. I've been eating a lot of cabbage. I said, I made soup and went through the line. And he said, cabbage is one of the things that will thicken your blood very quick. That and cranberries. Any kind of, he said, don't even eat a tablespoon of cranberries. So I don't eat cranberries at all. But yeah, I learned my lesson about that cabbage. So I had to finally learn to um, not eat excessive amounts of different things that would thicken or thin your blood. So I'll take it easy on this cabbage. Like I said, I could eat the whole thing, though. And I love kraut, too. Making kraut and eating that. I don't know if any of you guys has ever canned kraut or made it. Yes, it is, Amy. It's a, 
The trouble with me is when I find something funny like that, I'll go a week or two or three, and even if I talk about it, I'll start laughing. And he, Tom, my husband, he quit laughing, and I he, he'd look over at me, and I'm sitting there busting. My face is purple from laughing. I'm trying to laugh quietly. Yes, it does. I needed that, too. Just that little kid doing that. They are so cute. I told my husband, I said, probably when I get really old, if I'm still around, I'll probably be one of them women that wants them little live doll babies and things. Oh, boy. I'm not claiming that, but I'm saying I'd probably be one. So I love babies. And then we got to looking at the little newborns on there, and they'd make faces, and they'd pucker their lips, and we we just got a good discussion, Tom and I. We don't get to discuss like that. We just got to talking about when ours was little and how they puckered their lips and how I'd cry if they puckered their lips and how I'd laugh if they laughed. And my first uh, daughter... Um, I used to, <laughs> I used to sing to her. I didn't have her a long time, but I had her enough to bond, you know, and, uh, anyway, I would sing, um, you are my sunshine. And she'd look up at me and just grin from ear to ear, like she was grinning and pull her little legs up, you know, and anything. But it, you remember that stuff with your kids. So, well, what I was getting at is once you start doing that and you start seeing these little babies, your mind's already thinking, hmm, I wonder if I'll ever get another one little like that to hold because JC's three now. I'm not saying anybody in my family should, but what I'm saying is it was sure was nice that season that we had them and held them and watched all them little faces and I'm supposed to be making cab or doing cabbage here. I'm telling you about babies. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you're on any kind of blood thinner, uh, Amy, or anything, I've been on it for years. And I didn't know it either. You know, I never really paid attention. I was one of them people. But boy, when it got thick, I... Um, after that, I ended up in the hospital in 2007, and my legs, both of them, locked up. They they got thick, so thick the blood did. And I lost blood because I was bleeding somewhere. Didn't They didn't, never did find out where. But I was in the hospital for three weeks, and then I went back in for two more. And it took me four months to get straightened around where I could walk real good. They told me it'd take a year, but it didn't. Thank God for my husband. He cooked for me and took care of me, and I cried just talking about that. That's one thing I said I'd never do, is have my husband to ever wipe me or anything like that. Whew, don't ever say you'll never do something. But that was in 2007. And they finally uh, explained to me that my blood was... I don't even know how to explain it to you. It was thick and thin. And from my groin down to my uh, ankles was locked up with it. So we went through a, a trial in a period of that time, you know. And he, we done really well in it, though. And um, so, yes. If you're on a blood thinner or anything, it'll thicken your blood this cabbage wheel. So, cranberries. If you're on blood thinner, I wouldn't even suggest eating them. But, I've learned to do it in portion. Like if I'm craving it, like a lot of people will just do without it and then their body will crave it so bad you take 
products. Uh, what is that? Is that a blood thinner uh, that they give you that they don't have to check your blood? I have to have mine checked every month. And if it's thick, I got to have it checked every two weeks. But what is that, Laura? Is it a blood thinner? So anyway, that's the scoop on that. I've, I've not had any trouble since. I mean, I, I know how to eat the portions of it and stuff. And they tested me for that factor five and I didn't have it. So I don't know where in the world, like no one else in my family. Well, my half sister passed away my older half sister when she was 21 I think or 22 and they said it was a blood clot and she just had two little little boys but my mom don't have the factor five so and we had the same mom different father so I don't know where it came from what happened So I ended up coming out of it okay, and that was the third time. The first time I had it was when I had my first daughter, and I almost died with it then. And uh, then the second time I had it was when um, I had my youngest son, and I was in the hospital for a long time. And then I had it th here. And I had it one other time, but it wasn't as bad. And we're doing good. I'll tell you what. I don't know if you've ever experienced it or not, but... When you have a newborn baby, and they tell you you can take that baby in the hospital with you to get you there... And then they tell you you cannot have that baby. That someone else is going to have to take care of it while you're recuperating. And they tell you you're going to die if you don't. That's a nightmare. I mean, every day, every day that I was in the hospital, one day didn't go by. I cried and cried and cried. Because, you know, I just wanted them. Wanted, the, wanted them. So that's, it's really a nightmare when a woman goes through that. My youngest son, I think, <laughs> I smothered him too much because he was going away from me for a month after he was born. And uh, another little piece of information that you may not know, but you may, if you know any young mothers, and they probably know this. But when you have a blood disorder and you can clot like that, breastfeeding will make it worse. I didn't know that. And I breastfed my youngest son. And boom, I was in the hospital that quick. So no more breastfeeding. It'll thicken your blood. Don't ask me how. I don't know, but it will. <laughs> they finally told me that's what it was. So, there's all of our information tonight about that. So, I'm getting pretty full. That's the whole head right there. See? There it is. And that'll cook down. Let me get this water over here. There we go. Now, I don't want to waste any of this. But anyway, yeah, we got, uh, today, Tom's sister went to one of them food things. They, they give away free food here, I think, once a month at the fairgrounds in Vinton County. And the stuff they give away is really good stuff. And they gave all kinds of, um, they looked like lemons, but they were yellow oranges, juice oranges. And my husband, when I got 
home today, he was cutting up all them oranges. His sister left him, I think, four bags. He was peeling them, and I like them too, Amy. I got different colors of them. But, um, yeah, he was peeling them and, and you know, taking the sections apart and putting them in a big uh, ice cream bucket because course when I got home I got me a handful of them sections and started eating it but um, you can I don't know if a lot of you probably already know this stuff but you can take um, them oranges and them sections of oranges and just throw them in a bag and put them in the freezer and when you take them out whenever you need them you take them out and they are just like you peeled them when them thaw out but what I do is if I get really hungry for like a popsicle or something now these juice ones that we got from that my sister-in-law got from that food giveaway uh, they'll be really nice because they're the juice ones I'll take some of them out and put them in a little bowl and eat them like a popsicle and and usually in the summertime and freeze grapes and stuff like that but I mean you know when you go out to the stores that stuff's expensive so when they don't want something, I take it. <laughs> I was like, I'll do something with it. I'll try to do something with it. If I know that I won't waste it, I'll do something with it. So I've got two bags over there. I told Tom, I said, don't, don't section them all up. I said, leave a couple bags because I got a Tupperware um, juicer thing where you just, it's, it's for lemons and stuff. And I'm going to take and make some fresh juice out of a bag of them. And that way we can eat them. You know, well, drink them too. Yeah. Oh, do you do you know what they are, Amy? Because that's the first time I ever seen them. And I'm like, is them big lemons or what? And I think I seen them in California. And I was thinking them was lemons. And I bet it's them because they're yellow. And that's probably what I was seeing when I was down in California. And that guy told me, that Uber driver, he said, we don't eat them. We just use them for decorations in our yard. And I'm like, oh, I would eat them if they were in my yard. <laughs> Cara Cara oranges. Um, let me get one real quick and show you. big they're not very big whoa I'm going away see they're just little but he was peeling them and I bet you this is what I seen down in California because I thought wow look at them big lemons but um, shows how much I know about that stuff but is that what they are hi Carol is that what they are, Amy? Is Kara, Kara oranges? But I have two bags of these. I gave a bag away. And I got two bags over there. And he peeled, I think, two bags himself and sectioned them. So that way, if I want to make a fresh fruit salad, they're already in the freezer. And all I got to do is get them out and put them in that fruit salad or eat them like popsicles. So they're a good treat. I mean, that came free today. When I got home, we had like five bags of them. I gave a bag away, he done two, and I've got two over there to juice. So I'm tickled about that. Very tickled. Anyway, so we got this cabbage all cut up. And I'm just gonna put just that little bit of um, chicken broth from the Mennonites uh, I warmed up the water and put on. I want to put a little bit, of, and it's got parsley in it. A little bit of parsley, I think. And I'm going to pour that down in there. Just a little bit. And then I have this. I was, I was thinking about putting um, onions in it. 
but I, I'm thinking this now. It might not turn out very good, but I was thinking about putting some Lipton onion soup in it. Mix its beef and put some water in it. Wow. This makes dip. You put it in a bowl and put one envelope of this and two cups of sour cream chill and it makes about two cups of dip. That's pretty good. I've never used it for dip. I've always used it for other stuff. But I'm going to put just a little bit of that in. And then I'll put about uh, but you, about um, right. I will put a little bit of water in it to keep it from getting dry but see these are dry onions so you probably use them yourself i put them in everything so i'm not going to i'm only going to use a half of that not even half because i don't need it i just want to just flavor it a little bit so when i put this in my i'm going to pour some water over it i poured some water in this thing And then, whoo, I can smell that beef already. But anyway, I'm going to put it in this Presto. Oh, that's another thing about this Presto I like. Is, let me get this out of here. I'll show you something I love about it. Whatever I take to my family meetings or church meetings, this little thing right here in the front, this pen comes with it. Dry erase. And I can write. I can't write sideways here. Excuse my writing. I'm just trying to show you. See, I wrote cabbage on that. So that's what's cooking in there. And that's what I would... I always put down what I take. And then when you get done, you just take that and wipe it off. See that? That easy. These was a good find. I thought I'm putting the money in them because you know as well as I do when you carry them crock pots and you got food in them, your gut, I mean, it pulls on your gut, your stomach. With this, you're just taking it like a picnic thing. What's that on there? Oh, it's nothing. It's the cord. I thought, what is that? But anyway, um, yeah, so what I'll do is just stick this down in here, down in that slot there, shut that, mm, smells good, and then put this up, and then that locks it in there, and it starts cooking when I plug it in, so that'll be, that'll be there all night cooking, and eventually I'll get to smelling it too, now I wanted to do that tonight, Number one, I wanted to get on with you all. You are my, how do you put it? You're my peace. I know the Lord's my peace, but just getting away from the busyness of life and being able to talk to you guys and do this is my heart. So I'm glad you all come on and we got to talk a little bit tonight. So tomorrow I'm going to get on and make uh, that jello and there was something else I wanted too. Um, but anyway, when I get the cabbage done, I'll put a picture of it on here, down there, because I'm going to put corned beef. Uh, Peggy, they are on Amazon. Look under crock pots. And I got a this tan one and I got a red one. And I love them. I, that's one thing I'll probably never get rid of. Because one of them seems to cook uh, faster than the other one. But still, I know which one to put in what. So I'll put this big one on low and let it cook all night. And the little one's not much smaller. And all we got to do is put them out in our, our uh, SUV and go down the road and we got what's wrote on it for people if they want to eat it and stuff so I, I can't wait to
take a bite of that and stuff, but I can't wait to make that. Um, I forget what you guys said the name of that was, that green jello dessert we was talking about earlier. <laughs> it sounded weird, but at least it had a name. A lot of my stuff don't have names. So we're getting down now. We fixed, uh, my husband fixed fried potatoes for supper and fried bologna. And uh, he's a fry man. He's, he likes fry stuff. Uh, emerald salad. Amy said it's emerald salad. So I like emeralds. <laughs> I'll probably like eating that. But yeah, he fixed some of the noodles that I had. So we was trying to use up everything so I could start new now. And he's already, remember I told you, some of you the other night, that potato salad wouldn't last. Every day that I came home this week, it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And today, there was about that much left out of that big bowl. He loves it. So, anyway, I get up in the morning and fry our little puppy dog. She's 11. Little white, fuzzy little thing. Fry her an egg and put a little butter on it and a little bit of... Um, mozzarella shredded cheese and it makes her coat real pretty so she can't eat potato salad thank you pam i really appreciate you saying that but anyway i won't keep you guys up it's 10 30. that's how long it took me to get around to i'm soaking my towels and all that in bleach and stuff to get them real good and clean Don't throw what out? Your, the potato salad? <laughs> it's gone. It's gone now. And if you was close, I'd have you to come over and eat. Because we had all this food. I mean, shoo. But now we're, we're starting on something new. Now. And if anybody has this awesome recipe for beans, I make beans a lot. I know how to do it. But I'm looking for something. Something a little different. Um... Nothing wild like we used to make cowboy beans in the restaurant. Something that my husband and me can just get in every day and I take it to work with me when I work. Yeah, listen at me. Work. When I go play with the baby, um, I'll take it with me. So, we'll see. See what you can come up with. John, you finally got on here and seen this cabbage. I thought about you today. I thought, I've got to get that cabbage done. But anyway, you probably, if you go through, you'll see what I did to it. And uh, I'm going to let it cook overnight. And then tomorrow, I'll put um, the corned beef in it. That's what I'm putting in it this time. A lot of times, I like, you know, smoked sausage or something like that. But corned beef's going in it this time. Cause I want to get some crowd out, and make me some, make me a Reuben. It's my favorite food too, but I gotta watch. You'll see on the video. I have to watch how much I eat at once of it. And here I, you think things is really healthy for you, but for some people they're not. Like something that would be healthy for me might not be for you. And so cabbage and anything i was drinking that green food you know i can't do it either so what i was doing was i was trying to get healthy and i was actually killing myself and we just got to be careful you know because the bible says to do everything in moderation i think i need to do the cabbage in moderation but anyway i'm going to put a picture of it tomorrow online because i'm staying home tomorrow and I'm going to get some more stuff done and when I get my pantry rearranged with all my Tupperware and stuff in it and all my pans my husband switched it over for me you know I got a bigger room now I'll take you in there live and let you see it's pitiful guys it's really pitiful 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 that I have that much stuff but I don't know I see people get on and do their videos. They'll use a fork instead of a whisk. Or they'll use a little plastic bowl instead of the Tupperware. And I'm like, they do it. 
why do I have to have that? And I tell myself, because you never could have it before. And now you can. So I'm going to enjoy it. That's what I'm putting in it, Amy, is canned corned beef. Yes, that's right. No grizzle. Because when you do that, you get the grizzle, the fresh stuff. But yeah, um, I'm going to put the put that in there. So we'll see how it turns out. I can't wait. I thought about putting potatoes in with that, but I think I will just wait and see what I want to do with it. Anyway, you all have a good night. Have a good weekend. If you're not out and about running around, hop on tomorrow and see that. What'd you say that was, Amy? Let me see. Let me go back down here. Emerald salad. I've been looking for that recipe for years. So we'll try it, and I bet you anything my husband will really like that. I'm not so sure about that mayonnaise, though, but you know what? Them cheesy potatoes. Who would ever guess they had mayonnaise in them? They did, and they tasted really good. So just stick with the recipe, I guess. But anyway, Amy, I, I thought the same way you did that the nuts just wouldn't go good in it. I'd rather just have the, the, the other stuff with it. Yes, uh, Carol, them lasagna pans like I got, they're like, I think they're $79 or $89. They're very expensive, but like, I don't know, I could try to work it out. Not me, but I'm, I'm doing it through my niece right now because I just don't have the time to really put into it like I should. And uh, we'll see if we can find you one. And there's different sizes but that thing is a lifetime it's a lifetime it has the lid to it and everything and i love it so and i could just put it in the refrigerator because right now that uh eclair cake is in it with the lid on in the refrigerator so but yeah they're they're pretty expensive but they're they're just worth it i mean they're just awesome but anyway carol we'll see We'll see. And um, now that you know the price of it, then you can go from there and decide things. Yeah, I'm going to put the crushed pineapple in it. And it takes cottage cheese and mayonnaise. Lime jello, I think. But I'll know tomorrow. When I, I wrote the recipe down this time. God bless you guys. Thank you for coming on. I love talking with you. I've met some people that I just love uh, talking to. And pray for me. i got to speak um, again Sunday night. So we'll probably live that, but it'll be on the Vinton Chapel uh, Church Station where we have a, uh, we do live videos on that where I uh, pastor, help pastor a church. But anyway... God bless you, and I'll get on there, and I might just eat a little bit of that for you tomorrow. Who knows? John might go out and get him a thing of cabbage and make him some. So I'll talk to you later, and get a good night's sleep. Love you. God bless every one. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody asked me something here. Sometimes I don't see them right. Um... John, it's uh, Vinton Chapel is what it's called. And we, I made up a, I done a, like a, a site for it. And when we teach and, and they sing um, and stuff, they, we got some awesome people out there, like good old country people playing the guitars and, and stuff. So... It's called Vinton Chapel Church, and that's the site. And I'm the administrator, so I could go on and add you if you guys are interested in it or whatever. So we always had pictures of people and events and stuff like that. It's just a little country church is all, and I love it, and my husband loves it. So... You go right ahead, John, and do that. I think you'll enjoy it. 
we got a guy out there named Tim Bentley. Many, when he picks the guitar up, the whole atmosphere just changes. I mean, he's just a happy soul. And he'll pick that guitar and sing the top of his lungs, and he gets so excited singing. Yeah, we got some good people out there. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. John, get busy on that cabbage because we we can't eat cabbage virtually. We both have to make it and eat it. So I'm anxious to see what you're going to do. And did you make your beans? I wondered if you made your beans you was talking about. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. And I'm going to put this thing for cabbage in plug it in and then i'm going to go relax a little bit and thank you guys thank you for them such kind words i mean that just it blesses my heart you know to know that people have such kind words and stuff to say well john when you do maybe you could show us all a picture of them so god bless you and we'll see you tomorrow if you're around if not i'll live it and you can watch it later so i love you all